Gambit Chads, welcome to the series that is all about you. If you saw my video a week ago, I asked you guys to submit your games using my gambits. And I got so many awesome, awesome submissions. You can find the full repertoire that you can make. You can play um, every opening that you, you can get pretty much. You can form a full opening repertoire out of my gambits if you go to my link tree. And so anything here on my link tree, any, any gambit that I've made an opening of is fair game. And I wanna see your awesome games and I'll talk more about the weekly Gambit Genius at the end of the video and how you guys can get featured. But I got here five great, great games. I had so, so much fun sifting through it. Without further ado, I'll talk more about it at the end. Let's get to our first game. And this was submitted by PDV42. And here you can see uh, he sent a link, Potion Devi. Uh, hello, I'm a big fan of Gambits, and nearly all my repertoire is about W. Grafe openings. Today I would like to share my last Von Popfield Gambit, which was 12 moves. He spoils it. So, and this got um, some nice reactions in the Discord Share Games channel. People liked it. And as you can see, the accuracy is very high. Without further ado, let's get to this game. D4, D5, E4. We have a Von Popiel Gambit coming. Knight C3, Bishop to F5. So... You guys might know the Black Mardemer Gambit is with this move F3, and it's just like generic compensation. So white, black here captured two pawns, white captured the one pawn, so white is down a pawn, but white has like some nice development and like some files. However, however, we have a devilish trick. So this game was with bishop to F5 first, but in, in the Von Popiel Gambit, we play bishop to G5, which very, very often prompts this move bishop to f5, because it's actually hard to find another good developing move for black with this uh, actually losing the pawn due to the pin. Uh, so very often they play bishop to f5, and you'll get something very, very similar to what we saw in the game. So with f3 here, black is realizing that with pawn takes f3, our plan is not to play knight takes f3, but to play queen takes f3. Black played bishop to f5 first to protect the pawn in this game. Queen takes f3 to attack the bishop and to attack the pawn at the same time. This can be very, very scary. So this transposed to what we normally know with this bishop to g5 idea. So it was as if we came from this move order, as if knight f6, which is much more common, bishop to g5, bishop to f5, and then f3, which puts a lot, a lot of pressure on e4. Uh, of course, I'll link my von Popiel Gambit video, origin uh, the original one, where you can learn the full repertoire and how to play and crush with this. But we transpose to this position, and black here plays the most common move, pawn takes f3, after which white plays queen takes f3, the very, very surprising move. Black, I'm sure, was expecting knight takes f3, after which they would probably be able to consolidate with moves like e6, bishop e7, and castles. But in the game, white correctly follows <laughs> the gambit chad repertoire of queen takes f3, highlighted in my video, attacking the bishop and attacking the pawn, after which black plays not the best move, but the most common move in the Lee Chess database, bishop to c8, retreating all the way back to defend b7. This will not be the only von Popiel gambit uh, of this <laughs> of this first weekly gambit genius uh and you'll, you'll you'll see a couple other responses other than bishop to c8 uh we have a lot of things covered in the video including bishop to g6 bishop takes c2 e6 and queen to c8 but yes this queen is targeting f5 and b7 as a result of dragging that bishop out it's a very very tricky idea so bishop to c8 castles and pawn to c6 which is actually a good move so pawn c6 is better than the most common move pawn to e6 because it stymies the queen this way, and black is actually now threatening bishop to g4, which would take the rook. If they did that last turn, bishop to g4 would not be a good idea. This is much uh, worse for black in this situation. So c6 makes that threat. e6 being the most common move uh, in, in, in the database, black still just looking to finish their development and make it out of there. However, things end very, very poorly for them after d5, this huge strike, which takes advantage of so, so many pins, threatening pawn takes e6, opening the rook onto the queen. Um, there's a lot of ways black can lose very quickly, some of which include takes, takes, and lots of pressure on f6 and this poor queen. Uh, some of which include, let's see, e5 is, is is a good idea actually to not get these pawns traded. This is all covered in the initial video, but after check, no c6 because you don't want that pawn to be traded. Bishop to d7 in this very nice move, d6 to try and take b7. Uh, so for example, bishop takes d6, queen takes b7, we'll just win the rook. And uh, 
after c6, this bishop can just come back, black cannot develop, and white is going to take this pawn and win the game. So uh, some really, really nice ideas, but just striking very quickly uh, at all costs is basically the idea. So c6, like a, a little bit of a better idea, but still the idea is actually to play d5, but first, because d5 now, black is able to use the knight, they did not open this pin. Uh, like the other line, they're able to maybe make some trades and may maybe, you know, get out of this with bishop d7, a c6. We'll probably not get out of it, but because they're just so, so, so far behind in development. But still, it's better to include this move. Bishop takes f6, as mentioned in the video. In the video, I talk mostly about g takes f6 because e takes f6, as played here, loses, I think, very, very quickly at, to this nice move d5. Very, very difficult to uh, recommend a move for black here. I think c5 was the only thing we saw in the database, if I recall, in uh, the Lee Chess game, in, in, um, on, on the Lee Chess dat database. The issue for black is that after bishop to, to b5 check, they must play bishop to d7, which blocks the queen's control of this square, which is going to be important because rookie one, bishop e7, black needs to stop this move, pawn to d6. <laughs> so that's why we include this move, bishop to b5 check. And it's actually why we include it first. This is why move orders can get uh, a little bit important because king to f8 is possible now that they've moved this bishop. So we play this move bishop to b5. It doesn't matter whether they play bishop or knight to d7, rook to e1, bishop e7, d6, and that's a nice way to win the game after c5. I believe the best move for black that hangs on, I guess it's recommending here queen to c7. This is getting very, very testy, and I think I have some ideas on this. I think, yeah, so... so the, the idea of queen to c7, it's, 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 it's very particular, is that um, here d6 loses, right? But the point is that you're able to play queen e5. <laughs> White can move their queen, though, and still re-threaten this rook e1. Bishop e7 will still lose to d6, hitting the bishop, forcing it to move, and rook e1 will win the game. So basically, I mean, black's never really going to be able to castle safely in these lines with all of these issues down uh, these open files. In the game, bishop to e7, black finally makes their first significant blunder of the game. This is a problem because of just the very simple pawn takes e6, our first exclam for white, and first move they had to make on their own that I think was not covered in the video, pawn takes e6, hitting the queen here, and also if the queen just goes anywhere, c takes b7, huge problem, big four, queen supports that pawn and white will be up material. Remember, white only sacrificed but one pawn, so if you, know, if you can just, so at this point the material is already equal. Queen to c7, very understandable move to protect the d7 pawn, and looks like, okay, well, what's white going to do? What's white going to do? Like, like, okay, you make some developing move, but then maybe black is going to castle and get this back. If you take this pawn, then bishop takes b7, tempo on the queen, black castles, and looks like actually they're down a pawn, but it looks like they might have some good compensation with some nice development, some nice files, some nice bishops. White here has this very, very important move. I'll give you a chance to pause the video. It is knight to d5, as found by Potion Devi. Great, great move, knight to d5. And the trick, the trick, so, so you might be saying, okay, queen takes e6, what's the point? What is the point? What is the point? The point is bishop to b5, an absolutely filthy move. Two exclams, pinning the queen this way. Queen is lost if she takes on b5, knight to c7, fork. Filthy Filthy move, bishop to b5, combination with the knight there. Because for Potion Devi, he needs to see not, not just the tactic in this position, but he needs to know this pattern is coming. That's puzzle rush. That's tactics right there. That's tactics to, to know this pattern so well that you're going to imagine it in this position before even playing knight to d5 and realizing here that black is hopeless. Black does not really have many good options other than queen takes e6. For example, if it's queen to a5, looks like maybe that's some threat there. Looks like here, all white needs to do is play this move. Knight takes e7, king takes, looks impossible. Uh, yeah, if nothing else, just take b7 now. The knight is no longer in the way. And this is even worse now that their king's there, at least in the other situation, they were maybe able to castle. Uh, queen to e5 being the recommendation, so that you're not maybe losing that. And rookie one, white's, white's not developed, so they can't support that. However, white, the recommendation here is takes, takes, check, king to f8. And just keep developing, <laughs> and just keep developing, threatening rookie one. <laughs> like, like, like now all of White's pieces are so good, and they're going to use these files. And White's not even down pawn at this point anymore. And Black's king is in the middle. So a really, really nice game. I love this move, knight to d5. 
setting up bishop to b5, after which black resigned. So a 12 move, von Popiel, KO, uh, and I could not have played it better myself, and I don't think... St well, Stockfish could not have played that, played that better, because Stockfish would never have played the very based von Popiel gambit. Great game by Potion, Devi. And let's move on to our next game, which was submitted by Argumentative, who has done me the courtesy of sharing this Lee Chess study with me. I am one of the Lee Chess members, I see, uh, on, on this link that was submitted. And this was an 80 plus 10 game. So this is an over the board classical game, 80 minutes plus 10 seconds uh, for each move. Argumentative wrote that he is the UK, United Kingdom chess boxing champion. So shout out to him for, for being such a great chess player and boxer. So, and uh, let's scroll down a little bit. So I will put his comments visible here so that you guys, or else you guys would have the uh, text spoiled for you and you wouldn't have all these great pause the video moments. So second game here. So here is D5. So King's Gambit we're facing. Now, a lot of you might face King's Gambit as I do if you are a Bush Gas Gambit player. So knight to f3, bishop to c5, if you love playing the Bush Gas Gambit, all of these trick, this tricky, tricky stuff, I'll link that below as well so you can learn how to play it. But they don't always play knight f3, even though it's, I think, like 90% or more play knight f3 in this position. Sometimes you might face a King's Gambit. What do you do? Well, you gambit back. This is what I play. d5 takes... And I see, I have actually played this. I'll zoom in right there. Look at that. I've played this 12 times with a solid win percentage. <laughs> so let's get that zoom back. So E takes D5 as played in the game. So what I really love about this Nimzovich counter gambit, C6, as played here by Argumentative, is that white here can never play pawn takes E5, and some people fall into this, because of this issue, queen to H4, check, if G3, Queen to e4 wins the rook. And otherwise, they have to play king e2. And okay, they're still doing really quite badly here. They're probably checkmated. So in the game here, d takes e6. My understanding is that's not the best move. What queen e2 is this very strange engine recommendation. I think I believe the idea is to counteract what's going to be a killer diagonal this way that's going to stop white from castling for a very long time because of this idea queen takes e5. And if black does not want to allow queen takes g7, then they need to propose this queen trade. So queen e2, very strange move. Knight c3 is, I believe, more common. Knight c3 being a good move because it threatens pawn takes e5. For example, now there is no queen to e4 due to this knight. So g3 is playable here. Uh, after which black should play pawn takes f4, knight to f3 to stop queen h4 check. If white ignores that idea, well, queen h4 check is very, very strong if you don't have g3. And flat control g3 is very, very strong. So knight to f3, and this is now a transposition into, I believe, just like mainline king's gambit stuff. Not ma well, mainline, but it, but it's uh, more common stuff. So c6 here. However, most people, like I'll open the Lee Chess database here. The reason why this is so good is most people are actually just grabbing dc6, and the second most common move is f takes e5. And the third most common move is knight f3, which is also not a good move, because here black plays e4, just hitting the knight, then c takes d5, and they're doing great. So I believe I have another video on this that I'll link where I talk some more about the theory here. D takes c6. Pickler gambit is this move bishop to c5. Very, very playable move. Uh, our, our, our friend Argumentative wrote, I've been looking into this line recently, but I'm not familiar with it yet, so I stuck with what I knew. Very reasonable. Knight takes c6. Also very, very reasonable move. This is what happened in the game. Bishop to c5 is if you want to gambit even more, introducing this idea of takes, takes, and now you've got both bishops screaming down towards White's kingside, castle is going to be impossible for a very long time because this bishop is not looking like it's going to be blocked. I'm sorry, but when are you playing d4? You can still never take this pawn due to check and takes and your rook falling. So really rough situation for white. Tough positions to play here already after knight takes c6. The engine, I believe, recommends knight f3, but after e4 here, black's still quite in business. This bishop will come to c5. They're down a pawn, but... White is very far from castling, because if you're not castling kingside due to the bishop's con uh, control of g1, that's not going to be blocked. Well, are you going to castle queenside? You haven't moved even a single piece on that whole half of the board. And this pawn's already looking difficult to move. So, tough situation for white. They play this move, bishop to b5, which is reasonable. And black comes out with this very, very strong dark square bishop. You played this move f4. Here is your punishment for that. You're not going to be able to castle. Queen h4 doesn't really do anything, because g3, there's no queen e4 check. So, like... Queen h4 check is strong if you're like winning a bishop, 
or if you know you have this queen e4 check idea right or you know if it could be strong for a number of other reasons i mean one of the main ones is if you you know can take on g3 after which this pin becomes strong but if you're just getting deflected not the best idea but every time you move the f pawn that's something you have to watch out for is that diagonal and that diagonal to punish the king for being in the center and this diagonal to keep the king in the center and that's important at the beginner level and it's important at any level here. So queen to e2, white plays. White's realizing here that knight to f3 will run into e4 and after knight to e5, probably even just something like queen d4, threatening mate. This is just kind of gonna be probably a rough, rough situation here. Uh, let's see, the recommendation is just knight to f6. Really just hanging out and white is never gonna be able to castle. But knight f3 might be a better idea. White here plays this move queen to e2 trying to grab this pawn using the pin over here. And I really like this move by black, just knight g to e7, or knight e7 rather, because this knight's pinned. So knight g d7, shielding the king from the queen here. White grabs a second pawn. White is now up two pawns, but getting a little bit greedy. Black here has this nice move, bishop to d4. The queen was attacking g7 and c5. Bishop to d4 is with tempo on the queen. White's not able to get in a developing move. Queen has to move again. First, bishop takes c6, uh, while the queen still has this pin on the knight. So pawn takes c6, no matter. Queen shifts over and black castles. So what's happened in the opening? White grabbed a couple pawns here and, and, and uh, fished with their queen. However, black got castled, safe and sound, and this great bishop sits in the middle of the board cutting white's castle for the indefinite future. White is going to be several moves from being able to get their king out of the center. If they do, they would be up two pawns, but they are massively, massively de behind in development. Let's see if they can catch up. Knight to e2, trying to trade off for this bishop and also trying to shield the king from the center of the board. Black here plays this move g6, and now where to go with the queen? g6, so my recommendation would probably be this move queen to h4 because it pins this knight of sorts, right? Black does not want to trade queens. Trading queens benefits white for two reasons. One, you're up material, so you want to trade queens. And number two, even more importantly, your king is very unsafe. It's very hard to attack a king without queens on the board, right? Queens are very, very important to attacks in general. And so queen to h4 is going to put black in a situation where anytime they move this knight, um, they would have to trade queens. However, this position is very, very good for black still. For example, they can play rook e8 anyway, because if knight takes d4, knight to f5 is check and would win the queen. So rook to e8, not even having to, so activating the rook and potentially putting even more pressure on that knight soon and not even having to spend a tempo moving this bishop to save it uh, to control here. Because tempo, time is very important. Like if black is just kind of lollygagging in this position, just playing whatever, just playing whatever, then you know white can consolidate and be up two pawns. So black understands the urgency that of tempi and striking quickly here. So queen to f3, though, was played in the game, after which black plays this move knight to f5, which is a very, very nice move, be better than bishop to b6, I think. I like knight to f5 a lot, because now if white takes this bishop, knight takes d4, hits the queen, hits this pawn. White, white doesn't have pieces really to help them, and this queen has had to move so many times, and now it's going to have to move an additional time. The queen will also be obliged to defend this pawn. So, for example, like queen to d1. Now, after something like rook to e8 check, this king is going to have to move. And probably something like rook to e2 in this position. You know, there's re really nobody around to defend this poor white king. Queen to f1, I can imagine maybe bishop to a6 here. Okay, looks like checkmate's coming pretty quickly with this queen coming f2. Let's see if we got that right. Yeah, we pretty much got this right. This is this is quite lost. And, and what engine actually recommending that black... Uh, that white just allow that rook being taken because uh, they, have, they really have nothing out. It looks like black has nothing out, but these pieces come in so quickly with rook e8, with queen h4, uh, trying to slip in. So for example, in that line that I was just showing, queen h4 was a good idea because g3 gets black, um, gives black checkmate very quickly, queen to h3 and queen to g2. In addition, it was threatening queen to f2 as well. So all of black's pieces operating really, really well because white, instead of developing in the opening, was taking a lot of pawns. So queen to f3, knight to f5. And they're not really going to get another chance here to save themselves. For example, white should probably play something maybe like knight c3 in this position. But after something like rook to e8, d3, I think here there's a lot of different strikes that black can try. One that I like a lot is this move knight to e3, attacking c2. Um, and if takes e3, for example, 
just play rook takes e3. If takes e6, just bishop to d7, defends this. And the issue that they're going to have pretty quickly is uh, that this knight will fall because their king stays in the middle. Their king staying in the middle is what allows for pins like this to occur. So not the best situation for white here. Um, they're not able to get out of the middle of the board quickly enough. What they try here is c3, and this is a moment where black needs to be very precise. Because if they just come back bishop to b6, right? You, you, you really want to um, not have to retreat in situations like this. But if you just come back bishop to b6, then d4, this starts to look very solid as if a blockade. And now white's able to escape. And that is an absolute no-no. We need to have everything forward, especially in, we need to be very dynamic right now because we're playing up a rook, knight, and bishop at this moment, right? At this moment, if we play very dynamically before those pieces have a chance to get out, we have an extra rook, knight, and bishop in the game. And this is a great move. My black here, rook to e8. Rook to e8, again, ignoring the threat on this bishop. If pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, hits the queen, and black at the very minimum here is going to get their piece back after, say, queen moves somewhere, rook takes e2, and the bishop comes into the game with a devastating force. So white here realizes that they have to slide out of the way, king to d1. King to f1 was also an option, sliding out of the way here. So now threatening c takes d4, knight takes d4. This is no longer a pin. This knight can join the game. But it falls victim to bishop to a6, a great idea that pawn takes c6 actually opened up this window for black to strike through. So king to d1, however, king's not really safe anywhere. There's this idea of now a new pin on that queen and another brilliant move because bishop to b6 still d4 and the bishop is now a little bit locked out of the game and maybe white can try to block a little bit this way. c5 would be nice to chip away there, but your rook is hanging. So uh, king to d1, he wrote possibly not the most accurate, but definitely the most entertaining. I do think this is the most accurate. I love this move, bishop to f2, so much. It controls the e1 square, and the point is if queen takes f2, the threat we're trying to play is knight to e3 check. Great, great move, pinning this pawn with the queen. Queen takes e3, rook takes e3. This is another game that shows the force of these files on uncastled kings. And if king to e1, we have this move, knight to c2 check. If king to d1, we play this move, queen d3, not even taking here, but this queen sits so, so dominant on this d3 square, just trying to play bishop to g4, pinning there and just winning this knight with uh, overwhelming force. For example, if something like h, like knight a3, I think just bishop to g4, knight c2, we can just take this and win the game. Um, or maybe rook takes c2, rather. And if something like h3, black here... Okay, well, wow, this move, bishop to a6, just, just, just striking on that poor knight. Knight here, knight to e3 check, king d1, and maybe just something like knight to g4, winning the queen with with just all, all these pieces and, and nobody defending this poor king. Yeah, c3 is always so stupid if uh, you're never able to play d4 because it really locks your other pieces out of the game. So uh, in this line, king to f1 was also possible, but I... Yeah, bishop to a6 is good, and that rook is hanging any time, which would just put black up material. So in the game here, after knight... So queen takes f2 was not even played. And queen takes e3, by the way, is the recommendation of the engine to just give the queen. In the game here, after bishop f2, d4 was played. It's a good try. Bishop now controls uh, against this devastating threat of knight e3, which would otherwise force white to lose their queen. d4 was played. And now bishop to a6, activating yet another piece, targeting this knight who has really nowhere to go. Rook to e1 would defend it, not playable, due to the bishop. Knight c3, not playable. That pawn is critically defending this point. Knight to g3 would just get that knight taken, and bishop to e2 check, for example, uh, which would win even more material after this fork. So in the game here, white plays this move. Queen takes f2. Rook takes e2. Great, great force here that the rook is just coming in with. And white here plays queen takes e2, which is actually recommended by the engine. If white plays anything else, such as queen to f3, I believe something like, yeah, just pawn c5, just just crashing through the d file. And this is just overwhelming. White is only up two pawns. It's not like they're, they're up a rook for this massive, massive attack here that black is crashing through with. So in the game, queen takes e2. This was pretty much forced to play. Takes, takes. 
and queen to e7. So white traded their queen for a rook and bishop, but here come more of black's pieces. And I really love this queen to e7 check, rook to e8. We're using everybody in the game because here, so like still, if, 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 what, if black were to have no attack, they would have a rook, bishop, and two pawns for a queen, which is a sizable haul, but none of these pieces are doing anything. And queen to e2 check, among other things, is threatened. So White tries to manually castle, get the rook on the other side to shield the king from some things. But this nice move, knight h4, that knight is still in the game. Knight to h4, hitting g2. This is the only way to stop mate. Really nice way to finish the game. Queen to d1, rook f1, and rook to e1. Just take advantage of the fact that this rook cannot help. You would need to move both these pieces right now. Um, um, so, yeah, really nothing here. White can do takes takes. That would be checkmate. And if knight to d2, I believe just queen to e2. Now with this rook pin, there's no rook f2. So just takes and takes would be mate threatening on g2. In the game here, king f2, check. Um, nice way to finish the game, check here. And resignation with this coming. So a beautiful, beautiful game by argumentative, uh, by the um, United Kingdom chess boxing champion. By the United Kingdom chess boxing champion. And in a classical game over the board to get such a great, great attack where, you know, you brought all your pieces, white went fishing for this. This is just, this is just embodies the Gambit Chad's mentality, everything forward and um, <laughs> just use all the pieces. I love this game very, very much. Uh, thank you so much for showing. And here it is linked in the, um, from his league chess game. Here it is linked in the uh, Gambit Chad's discord. Okay. Let's go to the next one because there's so much more stuff. I realize I've spent a lot of time on these games. This game is was submitted by Spreak. Um, shout out to Spreak for submitting it right here. A couple people liked this and responded to it in the uh, Share Games channel of the Discord. This started out in a Von Hennig Gambit. So this is also in our repertoire, this position against the Karo Khan. Very common, D, T, D takes E4 is really the only move for black in this position. I mean, I mean it comprises for comprises a ton of the games d takes e4 and nice move here bishop to c4 this is the von hennig gambit so takes we take advantage of that diagonal immediately instead of grabbing this pawn back and the point is that after knight to f6 we can play this move f3 and this will <laughs> the von hennig gambit will be featured also in the next game that i will show you but yes with this move f3 after pawn takes f3 knight takes f3 there are lots of lots of tricks involving this diagonal and this diagonal as well in this game there was bishop to f5 and Spring here played this move g4, um, which is actually not the move. So I have a recommendation in one of my later videos in the Von Henning Gambit to play here. Pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes f7, king takes and the queen to f3, which is a crazy, crazy position attacking two pieces now. Uh, so we're getting one of them back because they can't take here and defend this because we'll take and take, right? So we're, we're getting one of them back here. If they defend the bishop, we can grab the knight. If knight to d6 is probably the best move, but still still g4, and black's king is unsafe. So this is fun stuff we can have no matter what. Bishop to f5, it's otherwise a very good idea to protect e4 rather than to make that capture, which gives white really excellent development. I understand where the confusion might come from. In the von Popiel, which can look very similar, the von Popiel gambit, in this line, black can play knight d7 to fortify that knight, which fortifies that pawn, right? Really not wanting to give to, to give that capture, to try and protect it here. Here, white plays this move g4, and then queen to e2 to attack this pawn, after which takes takes, and here white has a lot of activity that's also covered in the Von Popiel Gambit video. So g4 is the move there. However, in this line, there's really no benefit of queen takes, there's not a huge benefit of queen takes f3 because this pawn is on c6 rather than on e6 in the other position. So. Uh, yes, so next time this happens, be sure to play pawn takes F e4 and bishop takes f7 for this idea. In this game, however, Spreak played this move g4, bishop to g6 and g5, which I think is actually the engine's recommendation, g4, g5, because here white is able to get their pawn back with knight takes e4, but is not really in the game at Chad's spirit, uh, like this move bishop takes f7, this crazy, crazy sacrifice that we can play. So in the game g5, knight to d5, so we chase, so g4, g5, Crazy idea, we're, we're, we're chasing black's pieces that are uh, attacking e4. Pawn takes e4 played here, knight takes e3. I don't hate this line so much. Um, black here was probably way too in intimidated to maybe take on e4 as they should. Here, knight to f3 is probably necessary to defend the rook and probably black is able to consolidate with 
uh, best play. They got the bishop on the other side of this e6 pawn. They managed to do it, in which case the bishop should be able to largely protect their king um, in that vicinity if they're able to make it out of the center. Crazy idea though. Black played e6, and <laughs> Spreech insisted on sacrificing this pawn, even though here you could probably pr protect it and just enjoy a really, really excellent center and not be down a pawn and here have an advantage. But knight to f3, and we transposed to that to the gambit Spreech was probably looking for anyway, because here he castled. Crazy, crazy stuff going on here. We've moved this pawn all the way up to g5 in front of the king, but, but. King's only on safe if you can attack it, and so black will need pieces to attack it. So they try to do that. Bishop to d6, so these bishops are now well positioned. Queen to e2, hit the bishop in the game, and bishop to d5, bishop to d3. So bishop to d5 is not a move I love for black. I would like to, if I were black here, I'd recommend keeping the bishop there, defending it from this diagonal. This can be a very, very dangerous diagonal, and this, this idea pops up a lot in the Von Pop heel and in the Von Hennig gambit. Remember, the Von Pop heel is starting with d4, is like the Black Mardimer. The Von Hennig is this one that we play against the Karo Khan with c6 as the very first move. So bishop to d5, black trying to trade light square bishops. It would be a great trade for them, but Spree correctly declines it, plays bishop to d3, and after castles, now that bishop has some tasty, tasty targets this way, as if this guy were locked away back home behind e6. This bishop is not able to protect against what could be a very devastating diagonal. There's no knight on f6 to defend h7. You probably need someone else there. So, but black probably was happy about this. Maybe they're, they're like, oh, I'm pointing this way, but white, white, white pieces are just much better. They control more things. And it doesn't seem like black's queen is gonna be able to get here to cause any issue on white's king in this position. C4, great move, forcing this move. Bishop takes f3, and after rook takes f3, which I like, actually. Queen takes f3, also playable, but rook takes f3, I like it. Um, now white has an uncontested light square bishop. Black does not have its counterpart. Black's pieces are not very good, with the exception of, of perhaps this bishop. And white has a devastating threat, which black ignored. Black played just this move, bishop to e7, targeting this g5 pawn. It was um, the, These other pieces were focused on the g5 pawn. What did black miss in this position? White to play. White plays here. Bishop takes h7. Great great move. Love this Greek gift sacrifice here. Black needed to play g6 to consolidate, after which maybe they could play um, sur survive this with knight d7, queen e7, if they could hold off uh, some of white's other ideas. But white here would maybe play bishop to b2, bring that rook to f1, maybe look at d5. That bishop uh, can have some tasty ideas that way. In addition, white can operate maybe down the h file and f file in this position. Crazy, crazy position. Maybe actually, probably not bishop to b2 if you're going to lose this pawn. But um, some other uh, nice ideas there. So in the game, bishop e7 and bishop takes h7 happened. King takes h7. King h8 does not help either. This rook will swing to h3 and cause some brutal ideas. For example, here we have check and can checkmate in a very fancy way, sacrificing the rook for a single tempo just so the queen comes in with check and mate. <laughs> so um, nice idea. That looks pretty unstoppable in this position. In the game, king takes h7, rook to h3. I assume this gets black mated quickly. I was going to say this and this, but probably queen h5, and we got to track him down somehow. Uh, let's see, check, and mate, looks good, looks good. <laughs> so, uh, king cannot really go for a run, it does, it, all, it just doesn't have pieces out supporting, like, 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 kings are safe, not just due to pawns in front of them, but also you need pieces to support you. Like here, black has three pawns, but the king is not safe because there's no knight on f6, there's no bishop on f5, there's no pieces out to control important squares. Here, white's king is safe, even though they don't have pawns, because they have pieces out that control the important squares that prevent um, black from doing things. Bishop to e7, notably, actually, I, I forgot to note this, bishop to e7 threatened uh, also queen takes d4. I understand why, why, why black was maybe excited about that idea. That looks like check, and that looks like a free rock. Keep that in mind. King takes h7. Rook to h3 check. King has to come back to g8. And this move, queen to h5, just ignoring. So here, the engine wanted queen to e4 to threaten checkmate, with the idea being it protects against queen takes d4 check. And g6, queen h4, this is still going to be uh, a devastating mate threat. So that's why the engine prefers queen there a little bit more. In the game, queen to h5, which threatens two killer mate threats. But queen takes d4 check. But we don't care. Bishop to e3, great great move bishop to e3 because i think if you do anything else then black might have uh, a lot of checks in this situation I'm not really completely sure yes queen to e4 check king moves oh check and then maybe they're able to take this or, or just have a lot of checks i'm not quite so sure sorry about that 
So, but this move here after queen takes d4, white correctly plays bishop to e3, attacking the queen, it's protected, and threatening mate here and here. Black needs to actually give their queen here, which, and they're still losing. I mean, they only have a bishop and knight and maybe a pawn for this queen. So, but they can play your g6 and maybe survive a little bit because the needs to come back to h3 before um, white can reintroduce mate threats. But it's really quite lost for them. It's a minimum of plus three. <laughs> in the game, Black played the very understandable queen takes a1, so now they're up a ton of material. They're up this bishop that was sacrificed, they're up the pawn that was sacrificed, and they're up this rook, but just king to g2. This queen is out of checks. That's not checked due to that pawn. Queen is out of checks, and just queen h7 or queen h8 will be checkmate. Rook moves, queen h8 is checkmate. And here Black plays f5, which looks like it might um, give them an out with the f7 square, but white correctly plays this move g6, after which Black has nothing to stop queen to h8 with the pawn controlling that square. So crazy, crazy game. Uh, I would still recommend this bishop takes f7 idea because I think in this line, Black could consolidate here, but Gambit Chad's spirit here, we, we really just went all out on the attack and brought a lot of pieces and uh, even let them take that rook because the mate threat was so strong. So a really, really nice game by Spreak. Next game will also be a Von Hennig Gambit. Uh, D4, Black really wanted to play Cairo Khan and White said okay. Uh, E4, I, I assume Michelle 182 who submitted this game. Um, probably it plays D4 uh, because they're looking for a Von Popiel in this line. So C6, and they've said okay, E4, and still we're going to sacrifice that pawn on E4, playing bishop to C4 with a Von Hennig Gambit. Knight to f6, f3, this is typically what it what the von Hennig looks like. Pawn takes f3. So we saw if black plays this advanced move, bishop to f5, most people will play pawn takes f3, but this advanced move, bishop to f5, trying to hold the pawn here. Remember, we have this idea, bishop takes f7, and you can find more about the von Hennig gambit and these lines on my channel. Pawn takes f3 played here, and here white plays this, knight takes f3. So lots of lots of fun tricks here. If e6, we have now, we call this victory because black has locked this bishop out, and we have some really nice ideas to start attacking on h7 in lines like this. For example, knight d7, queen to h4. This knight becomes paralyzed and of utmost importance because of the threats on h7. If black ever plays h6, that will get taken. Black often has to play g6, in which case they have to deal with uh, even more issues down this way and this way with that knight becoming soft. And otherwise, you know, if they just do something, then what we're looking to do here, you know, with no h6 and takes, uh, what we're looking to do is take that and take it again, you know, if there's an, another knight, and eventually checkmate on h7 after we eliminate a knight from the f6 square. So that's what white can do with dominant control over that diagonal. Uh, if black here plays this move e6, if they play bishop to g4 to try and get on the other side of this door, then we have the very, very nice tactic knight to e5, threatening bishop takes f7, and threatening this, they take our queen, we take their king. So knight to e5, very, very nice move. I've gotten all of this stuff in my games. Black here played the best move of the engine, bishop to f5, Looks like a great square. They'll play e6, bishop e7, and castles. No problems, right? The bishop should be safe there, right? Wrong. We have this move, castles in the von Henning gambit. Black plays e6 and knight g5, so immediately causing problems. If black plays bishop like something like this or this to target the knight, what we can do is take f7 and take the bishop. The bishop is not safe on f5 due to the rook and this pin. So the bishop again has to move. Bishop to g6. Okay, controls this diagonal. It's out of the way here. It's finally found the perfect square, but we take advantage of now the e6 pawn that it doesn't control. Bishop takes e6. This is all, for, all from our theory. Pawn takes, knight takes, queen must move now somewhere. And no matter really where it moves, we play this nice, nice move, bishop to g5. And here's where Stockfish really struggles and its evaluation comes down. So white here is down a piece for but a single pawn, but this knight is so good. Queen takes e6, which the engine kind of recommends sometimes. Uh, this is the reason why I played bishop to g5 last move, actually. Because rook to e1, otherwise knight to e4, and black was kind of successfully able to grab that piece. But in this move, we have bishop takes f6. It's now very, very difficult to get out of the way of this. Uh, it, and if pawn takes f6, rook to e1, this line is kind of recommended by the engine, and it's the, but the, it's this very imbalanced kind of equality where black does have a rook and two bishops for a queen and a pawn, which is more in a vacuum. I'd rather have the rook and two bishops, but the king's very unsafe and black has no development. And here, I believe king to d8 is actually even recommended by the engine, after which white can strike and try and use all these files and weaknesses. So a very imbalanced kind of position. And this is really if black plays kind of optimally. Otherwise, with bishop to g5, this knight, if you're not going to take it, 
Well, <laughs> you suddenly have an untouchable knight on e6 that does so much damage, stopping black from castling in any direction. If black kind of does nothing, suddenly after just something like queen to e2, this knight also defends d4 from this queen, by the way. Uh, tons of pressure on this poor king, king to f7, and even more pressure can be uh, put down here with like ideas like d5. Oh, that wasn't even the best move. Uh, looks like what white is lost here after takes, takes. Oh, rook takes f6, check, sheesh. Takes, check, oh my goodness, everybody's everybody's joining the party. This king has nowhere to go except for e7. And bishop f5, there's queen e5, check. King e7, take, that's protected. You cannot take it with the king, it's check. The queen will die in this line. Wow, filthy, filthy stuff all over the place. So it looks like black maybe could at least play bishop to e7, shield this, defend f6 a little bit more, but that bishop was actually defending something else important from this knight, this absolute octopus of a knight with, that's controlling like all squares in all directions. Knight takes g7, great move, the bishop um, needed to control that, king to f7, and now this very important move, knight to h5. The king stepped into this pin, f6 is not fortified, we eliminated that very, very important pawn, we're not just pawn fishing, that was a very, very important pawn, this knight now needs to be protected, there's one, two, three dudes attacking that f6 knight, how do you protect it? You cannot protect it with the queen. Queens do not make good defenders of things because you don't want to trade them off. So in this position, bishop takes h5. It's kind of quite obliged. Queen takes h5, check, using that pin. Knight's not very helpful here. King g7, trying to stay as a defender of the knight, but you cannot stay there. Queen to h6, check. Black, again, not able to bring their pieces out. That is a common theme in these games. We are striking first, even though black is technically up material. They're not actually up material because if all the action happens right now, we have pieces in the game and you do not. These pieces don't count unless you're able to consolidate and have the chance to bring them out. So king to g7, queen to h6, check, drives the king back. We're able to now just take f6. And here white is now just up two clean pawns. And by the way, that king is still getting checkmated. Takes f6, queen takes f6. I believe the engine wanted rook takes f6 even more, but queen takes f6, this is... Oh no, I'm, I'm wrong. Um, threatening queen to f8, and uh, uh, in addition to a host of other ideas, for example, if knight to a6, this rook can shift across to g3, which can win the game. Um, queen to, oh, knight to a6 actually was played. Sorry, knight to a6 was played, and rook to f3 was also played, uh, with, with other ideas, including rook to f1. Uh, so for example, here, if like h6, I guess one way to win the game here would be check, and check, and rook to f7, for instance. Uh, otherwise, um, this king is very, very exposed, and we're trying to use all of these files. So rook to f3, trying to shift rook to g3. In the game here, queen to g7 was played. White here has the immediate knockout, queen e6. That square was not available for the king in this line, so this would be mate in two. But this was also quite winning, rook to g3, making use of this pawn, pinning the queen, winning the queen, takes, takes, and here white converted this quite nicely, bringing now their last piece into the game. It's always nice when we use all of our pieces. And this nice series of checks that looks like the king found a safe haven, but he did not, unfortunately. Queen to d7, there is no way to defend this b7 pawn. Uh, knight would get taken here, it would get taken here, and this check does nothing. So really, really nice game um, by white here with this move bishop to g5. Black has done everything correct and still finds themselves in an impossible position, they, even though they've played literally all of Stockfish's moves uh, into, to this point. That's why I love the Von Hennig Gambit so much. So thank you, Michelle182, for that submission. So we have this last submission, which is <laughs> very, very interesting because I'm going to play you a very special clip. Um, during the submission. So, okay, so you'll see you'll see what I mean very, very shortly. So here we have this move e4, and now this move pawn to b6, d4, bishop to b7. So this was submitted by Rafi G. Shout out to Rafi G. Leela Gambit as white, just play h4 as a waiting move. Keep that in mind. So people really like this one. I really like this one too. So bishop to b7, this is the Owens defense. Um, uh, that, that black is playing, bishop to b7. So, so what do we mean actually by the Leela Gambit? What do we mean by the Leela Gambit? So the Leela Gambit is something, is a video that I have, but it really is with black against the Larson opening. So with this bishop to b2, knight to c6, e3, d5. So this is, this is kind of like almost a trick if black plays the most obvious things to defend this e5 pawn. Now they get pinned and now this can be pretty nasty because you play bishop to d6, to protect e5, but now in something like f4, knight f3, this pawn becomes under a lot of pressure, and takes g7 can win your rook if you're not careful. 
So this can, can get very hard to play. However, there's this nice nice move, knight g to e7. Now takes. Now we play a6, and you'll see you'll you'll see these ideas except for white. So except for white, we're going to be up a move if we get this transposition. So in this line, the same things happen. Black's playing an Owens defense and trying to play bishop to b4. Of course, there's a lot of ways you can play against the Owens defense, but your opponent probably knows them all better than you because you know if they're an Owens defense player, they probably know the line quite well and you I don't know do you have a repertoire against b6 bishop b7 maybe not but maybe you do now you can throw in this move h4 such a random move such a random random move bishop to b4 I'm actually seeing that I have one game here that I won let's see let's see actually wait so keep that in mind so knight to e2 was played allowing bishop takes e4 now a3 so i'll, I'll link the, the leela gambit video as well so now we have the same as the leela gambit except with this move h4 h4 is a very useful move and you'll see why so we're threatening to take this bishop if this pin is broken right so bishop retreats bye bye bishop bishop here also bye bye bishop so black really has to i mean i mean not really has to absolutely has to play this move take c3 knight takes c3 beautiful capture for us we grab the bishop pair knight is threatening this uh, bishop is open and the queen is open now with the no knight there so the bishop retreats and queen to g4 this is all really the most common stuff and uh, i have one game here with with king f8 played as you can see the engine's recommending it so let's let's look at my one game here uh so here king to f8 was played i play this move bishop to g5 as recommended in the leela gambit so the leela gambit is everything reversed but with that pawn on h2 you can see how this pawn on h4 might be helpful if bishop to g5 is an idea in a lot of lines, right? Could do well to support it. Rook h3 is an idea in a lot of lines. h5 is an idea, you know, if g6 happens. So h4 is like, like, like a very nice move, and it's a very, very good waiting move to get a gambit that we really like anyway. So here you can see it's already actually plus 0.5. I have the eval bar on there. King to f8, we play this nice move, bishop to g5. Black here plays f6. Uh, knight to f6 was also possible, but that really is just putting you in a devastating pin. And maybe one day I'll bring my pawn to h6 and undermine you right there. So, and f6 is also possible, but f6, this is all kind of still recommended by the engine. Now I just come back bishop to f4. So I put that pawn on f6. There's no knight coming to f6 that would bother my queen. And the development advantage is just so massive. And this game ended so quickly. So black here, uh, play this move f5. Right, so tempo on the queen trying to develop that knight. We slide back queen to g3, looking at that pawn. Black plays here d6, bishop to c4, looking at that pawn, uh, with this pawn no longer on d7. Queen to f6 played, and knight to b5. This is so funny. My opponent resigned here. My 2414 opponent uh, just resigned here, even though they could play knight a6, which, you know, is not losing a meat. Like, I, I have this idea, and it takes and, and takes. And uh, now I'm up a pawn because I was able, sorry, I should go through that tactic a bit slower. Uh, takes d6 check is now winning uh, that knight here. And we were able to grab two pawns in the course of this complicated knight trade. So now we're up one pawn. I probably wasn't even going to do it. I probably was just going to castle, honestly, and just play rook to e1. Just bring everybody to the middle. And this position is just so devastating. It's plus three. It's plus three, just, just it, like, like, Black's position is just that bad. Like, their king's move, this knight is so awkwardly tied down. Like, all their pieces are just so bad, and all of White's pieces are just so good. That is just, like, so impossible to play. And my opponent, like, it's just so psychologically crushing when your opponent just blitzes out, like, these awesome gambits and everything. It's just like, I have had enough. I just don't want to play this game anymore. And up a pawn, and not even immediately losing, just resigns. So that's how bad their position was. And it's, you know, honestly, I understand it. Although, you know, I am an advocate for fighting hard if you have uh, even a little bit of a chance. But so that, that, that was my funny game here. And <laughs> this game is also going to be very, very cute and very, very short and sweet. So g6, bishop to g5, f6, bishop to e3. This is all following my video reversed. And in fact... In fact, I want to play you, I want to play you it. I would love to play you, here it is, here it is, because I said something that I think is just so funny. Let's, oh, sorry, I'm going to shrink myself here. Oops. Don't worry. Okay. I said something here that is just so funny. So this is the original Leela Gambit video. This is the original Leela Gambit video, so I will listen so you guys don't hear it twice through the microphone. This is the original Leela Gambit video where I uh, outline the theory here for her um, 
for you guys all to see. There's also a Leech study there. Uh, this is pretty much what, what I do with all my gambits. The very first video that you can find there is um, pretty much just a chessable course, but for free. And uh, so here it is without, without further ado. So we're going through all the lines. Here's the G3 line. G3. We're, we're going to take advantage of these light squares, for sure. They have no light square bishop. They have all dark square pawns. So, yes, this is Swiss cheese central. Holes everywhere. Bishop G4 hitting the queen. White this is me from three. four months ago. Collecting our bishop. We just come back. And now lots of ideas for black. So remember, this um, is for black now because we don't have this h5 white, move included. So this Leela Gambit is for black. Um, we can play here h5 and h4. Under See how h5 is a useful move, and though. I'll show you one line, actually, that I really liked that follows. Here's the one line. Here's the one line. I'll show you one line that I really, really liked. Is here in ac3. Okay, we castle long. Queen e2. And now to strike that I'm sure you're very familiar with, or that you will be in these lines, where they take on e5. It is to strike with d4, hitting right in the middle uh, against this knight. Knight e4 makes a lot of sense. And now this absolutely nasty, nasty move that you would not think to play. For to choose the square for your queen, where would you go? It is queen to e5 that we're going to choose, which looks very unintuitive. It looks like you just put yourself right in a pin. So white's castling long. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Sorry That's about that. So but yes, yeah, so the, qu the, qu the, queen, the queen was attacked and we <laughs> played queen to e5. The right arrow. Imagine right, if you guys got a game where you put the queen on e5. Back, so, so this is where we were, right? At least, at least this will give us a refresher on where we were, how we got here, yeah? So, after queen to e5, okay, castles, right? So this was the point, this is why they played knight c3 and queen e2. Absolutely filthy, filthy move here from black. Pause the video, what can black do? This is kind of meta, but feel free to pause the video. If you got it, <laughs> I am very impressed. Drop it in the comments. Bishop to a3. Bishop to a3, deflecting this piece. I said it was good, so we're going to make it move. Take it's such a nice move. And d3. And d3. Otherwise, it, like, if it's our move again, we play d3, they can't take our queen, so we're attacking this queen and attacking this bishop twice. So, takes, we play d3. Okay, we're threatening the queen, and we're threatening mate. But wait, but wait, can't they just take this pawn and create a square? Check. King to c2, and if we take here, maybe the bishop on b2 could guard them for, for, for a minute, right? Takes, bishop here, takes, king c1, oh, maybe they're hanging on. I just like doing the highest oh, form of content creation, oh, which no. is react content. Oh no, another Even though it's coming. my own we content. We need this guy to move again. <laughs> we need him to move again. Knight b4. Such a nice line. Knight b4. <laughs> Boy, here has but one legal move. It is bishop takes b4, and now they are out of blockers around their king. Wow. King to c3, this is mate in one. We've got our bishop on e6, king to c1, bishop takes b3, and... <laughs> I love my opening so much. <laughs> of these pieces, to block, of pawns, to block these pieces, and absolutely nobody can guard queen c2 because this queen is walled out by her own pieces and queen c2 will happen next turn. So that's an Okay, so this so this is the awesome line. thing I, just I said. I love that line so much. I I'm just like looking at all these at, at all these engine lines I'm trying to you know also also make it into digestible concepts that 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 I would apply and you guys can apply to your games. But this is just one that I thought was just so so fun and also could happen in the game because in this position like knight c3 and queen e2 it could happen in a game. The most common moves and it could. Four, castles long the, the, that actually could could happen. So definitely let me know if you get bishop to a3 in a game. All right, but that all started. <laughs> let me know. Let me know if you get this in a game. <laughs> so shout out to Rafi G for letting me know, except the colors are reversed here. But anyway, so we have this bishop to g5. Let, 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 me, let me put this back. Let me put this back. You guys don't need, you guys don't need spoilers yet. You guys don't need spoilers. Uh, here we go. We're good. We're good. Okay, let's make let's make me bigger. Okay, so bishop to g5, f6. So this is very, very similar to what you just looked at, except the colors are reversed, and we have this move h4, which you guys saw it was an important idea, because h5 is an idea, and swinging this rook across is an idea. So knight to c6, castles, queen to e7. Black realizes that, oh my goodness, I'm not safe going this way, right? The queen, all, all of white's pieces are there, my, 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 my pawns are destroyed. Maybe I'll be safe going this way, and I'll just be up a pawn. So we have this great strike with d5. 
knight to e5, and this very, very unintuitive move. Let's, let's check the Lee Chess database. This very, very unintuitive move. He's the first to play this move. There are six games. Only one of them is with queen to e4. And it is this game. Queen to e4. Very strange move. Why would you put yourself in a pin? You could also play queen to a4. That looks like it makes a little bit more sense. It puts pressure here. It stops castles because of the threat of taking a7. Uh, if that rook were to move for castling. And, you know, also takes you know, pieces of coordinate here. Anyway, queen e4. Great move. We talked about this. Castles. Filthy, filthy, filthy move. It works with the pawn h4. It works with the pawn on h2. It works with the colors reversed. Bishop to a6. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now, so we're threatening now, you know, if like there's nothing. D6 with the pin with this hit. Oh my goodness. Attacking the queen. Just such a great, great move. Bishop to h6. Um, wow. D6, I, I, I see, is recommended by the engine, but just takes e6. This is still a pin. This is still checkmate goodness covering that square um so we get to a6 everything's cooking for white here on the light squares so to this point rafi has not had to think to this point rafi has not had to think and i guess the opponent realized that takes d6 takes like this line that we talked about knight to v5 check this 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 would all end in checkmate with the threat of queen c7 here in this position uh so the opponent tried out something new though which is this move pawn takes d5 so here rafi has to think for the very first time correctly plays this move knight takes d5 now here the engine's recommending that that black actually just lose their queen they can't even play knight takes e7 because they'll get mated so they can play king d8 here and i guess not lose it immediately but they're down a queen so they really have lost immediately queen to e6 was played much more logical trying to stay in the game if you trade bishops now and just go knight to f4 check looks like maybe you and the queen but black here has this nice move queen to c6 so white here has but one winning move and it was found by rafi knight to e7 he had to play just a couple moves himself. He played the best moves. Knight to e7, check whether you move your king, whether you take, so black here resigns because whether you move your king or whether you take the knight, queen takes b7 is going to be checkmate. Wow, 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 wow. What amazing games. Guys, I had so many great submissions. Uh, this video is already, I'm looking over, it's going to be like an hour long. Um, wow okay next we'll have we'll have even more awesome weekly gambit geniuses um join the discord um please feel free to subscribe on youtube if you liked this content uh i really really appreciate it uh just under half of people who watch my videos subscribe but please uh Join the Gambit Chads community, play these games, share, 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 share these games. These, these Gambits are about making more theory, and they're not just about me. They're about all of you guys, and it, it, it's, it's like see, seeing a game like that 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 I, you know, was just like, wow, I, I hope somebody gets this line. That would be so awesome, and then somebody did. And even just like all of these like great stories of you guys raising your rating and, and all your awesome games that you guys play with these lines, it really just warms my heart. So thanks so much. So I'll link this... Um, I'll link this there and you guys can find all of my videos to form a full Gambit repertoire or, you know, whatever your favorite Gambits are. You can also pick and choose, but I really, really do my best in uh, creating these and just trying to find uh, opening innovations and the trickiest possible openings for you guys to play. And so thanks so much. Join the Discord, subscribe, and share your games, uh, Weekly Gambit Genius 2. Hopefully we'll be able to top this. Uh, it'll be tough, but I'm sure we will. Uh, sorry if I did not choose your game submitted again, and maybe it will happen next time. All right, thanks so much. Join, uh, share, and subscribe. Have a great night.